Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher, and welcome to another session of Not Perfect Zen. I hope you're having a great weekend. It is really cold where I am at right now. I know for some of you, you would say that 40 degrees is not that cold, but it's cold for me. And so I'm happy to be inside and doing a video for you today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one of the things that I like to do is to look through tiles that I did in the past, and I can't find where I have that tile, but I really like how this looks. And the pattern is called OTM. And it's by Carrie Kamara. She's a CZT. And I did this in 2019. And it is simple to do. Um, the setup is a little bit... Not difficult, but I will show you how to get the grid set up for this. And um, I'll just go ahead and show you what I'm going to teach you today. I wanted to do that pattern, but I've also wanted to do various versions of henna drum, just because that's one of my favorite patterns, and I happened to come across some different ways that people had done it, and so um, that's what we're going to do. OTM and henna drum. It's an odd combination, but it's fun. I, I enjoyed it anyway. I will be using a Zentangle tile, and on the back, I've already written down who did these. So, OTM by Carrie Kamara, that's C-A-M-A-R-R-A, -R -R -A. she's a CZT, and Henna Drum by Jane McCoogler, also a CZT. So, a Zentangle tile, I'll be using a Micron 01. Uh, Graphite pencil, blending stump, or also known as a tortillon. And I keep this in here to keep the tip sharp. And possibly my eraser. So the first thing I want to do is to set up this grid there in the center. And we're going to go ahead and do our corner dots. And... I'm going to do it fairly close to the edge because this is going to become our frame. And I'm going to try to keep it fairly even as far as going straight across. Okay. All right, <clears throat> now to get this grid set up, what I did to begin with was make a straight line. I find I do better if I pull it toward me. Keep your eye on where you're going and that'll help. You see, it's not a perfectly straight line and that's okay. Now I'm going to come across the other way. And I will try to remember to put the timestamps on this when I get it onto YouTube so that you can bypass some of this if you want to. Um, okay, so now I know where center is. And from there, I'm just going to put a little mark. And like I said, that just helps me to find center. Because I'm wanting to put straight lines across here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. It'll make more sense when we get it done. Okay, so now we're going to connect these lines.
and it's not going to be perfect, but it would be a better square doing it this way than if I tried to just draw and guess where the center points were. Okay, so now we have the square and the center. We won't need these lines out here, but I'm not worried about them. So next, we're going to put a diagonal both ways in each of these squares. Okay? To me, this is just, it was a very relaxing tile. And I actually did it several times because the first time I didn't do it right. Okay, let me straighten that out a little bit. Okay, so now we have the grid that we need for this. Now, I tried to find the step outs for this. And I found her website, but she said she was going to put the step outs, and she never did. Or at least I couldn't find them. So I'm going to show you my step out. And so we've already put these X's in here. <clears throat> and now we're just going to put R's in each one of these. And... Hopefully this will help you to see what I plan to do. So like I said, we have this, and now we're going to put these R's in there. And yes, this kind of takes a while, but I really enjoy it. So now that we've put this on here with pencil, I'm going to go over it with ink. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I don't put music in the background. I don't speed things up. You can use YouTube controls to make this faster or slower as you need it. Okay, remember we're not going to ink over these outside lines. Those were just there to help us find center. Just take your time. Just enjoy one line at a time. <clears throat> Sometimes I enjoy grid patterns, sometimes I don't, but I like this one. Okay, now we have that inked in. Uh, what I want you to see on here is that for each of these little boxes that I have, okay, I'm going to start at the same place each time when I start to make these triangle auras. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to work with this square right here, and to the right of this center point going towards that corner, I'm going to put my first aura. These are not going to be perfectly straight or perfectly spaced, but it doesn't matter. I just enjoy drawing them. Okay, so I'm trying to make them about the same distance apart. I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny one down there. Okay? And so, just like here, I'm going to turn my tile and go back down to center 
then come up. Okay, so here's the center of this square. I want you to do it a couple of times as long as you keep remembering where to start, which I did not do <laughs> on one of my other tiles. And it'll come out right. So when you uh, try to deconstruct a pattern, like I did on this one, to make the step out, it's a very good way to learn about patterns and how they come together. I will try to not go too slow on this. Okay, turn. Again, here's our center point. And I started just to the right of that. Okay, there we go, we got our first one done. So I'm gonna go to this one now. Here's my center point, going towards the edge of the square. I'm gonna start just to the right of that center line. Go toward the corner and then just add your other lines. Okay, center, a little bit over to the right. Start again. And I'm gonna try not to go too slow on this, but when I'm doing it, I just like to take my time and enjoy it. Okay, find center, come to the right a little bit. And this really is also one of those patterns that it looks really cool when you add the shading. Okay. All right. We got two down, two to go. Find the center. Come a little bit to the right. I could easily fill a tile with these, even a little bit smaller squares. And you can see that mine are not all exactly the same. That's totally fine. One thing I enjoy when I go to the Mosaic app is um, when I see a tile that I really like that I think it's perfect, I will zoom in on the lines and see that it's not. And I'm talking about even with Rick and Maria and Molly, Martha, that... Um, they're not worried about perfect lines either. They just enjoy drawing one line at a time. Get quiet and <laughs> get into the zen. All right, last one. I think some grid patterns are very easy to uh, get into the Zen, 
to just relax because the, the pattern is easy to remember, easy to draw. And I think this one's really easy. Once you figure out <laughs> where you need to be here in the center, okay? I don't necessarily do some of the fancy Zentangle-inspired art I have in the past, but um, I just enjoy the simple stuff now. I have decided this year to do what I enjoy. Don't stress about doing fancy things that I find difficult, so find what you like and then do it. Okay, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Okay, so the patterns that I found, this one is by Shelley Beauchamp and this one by Helen Williams. She had some beautiful versions on her site. Um, this one I found on Instagram, I believe, um, Diana Marshall, and then this one, all I could find was her first name, Annika, I guess, um, but found this as part of one of the diva challenges that, uh, I can't remember the lady's name, but she would do these diva challenges. And um, this was one that came out for that. All right, so let's let's start with this one. And she just has. Let's see if I can keep it there, and you can watch me do it. Just a small little half moon, and we're gonna fill it in. Okay, and then an aura around that. And then she put little dots in that aura. Okay, and then, well, I actually need to get that out of the way. So with our petals, we're gonna come up down, up a little taller, back down, and then back down to here, okay? So we're just going to repeat that. Up, down a little, up taller, down, and back down. Same thing again, and it may not have room to get all these petals on here, but there we go. And they're not perfect. <laughs> okay. Tall one. Back up and back down. Okay. Up. And back down. Okay? Definitely this one looks a lot better. <laughs> All right. Uh, next thing she does is put a line that goes up toward each of these little pieces of your pattern. That one could have been definitely a little bit softer, but it's okay. Let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more for you. Okay, so now I'm going to add an aura. Okay. 
Okay, don't worry if you go past that borderline. That was just a guide for us. I always enjoy putting the aura around the outside of henna drum. It just seems to pull it all together. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, one thing I did on this one that I forgot to do was I put an aura around the outside of the square, but that's okay. All right, the next one I'm going to do is this one by Diana Marshall. And we're going to start with a bigger half moon here. And let's go ahead and put our aura around it. And then inside, I'm going to do this cross hatching. I love cross hatching. And then just come across those lines again. You don't have to worry about if they're perfectly at squared or whatever just put another set of lines okay now these almost look like hearts okay so i'm gonna come up and do just a little bit of a heart shape and then we're just going to keep coming around like that. And then over here, just one more. Come back your other direction. And this is just how I like to do it, is start in the center and then go back in both directions. Okay, that one fit in there pretty good. Um, the next thing she does, and there are no step outs for these, I just following what I found. She's going to add an aura. All the way around. Okay. And then what we're going to do is ink in that aura. Okay, leaving some little highlights, or you could ink the whole thing in and come back with a jelly roll pen. So, I'm gonna start here and try to remember at the top of each of these to leave a little bit of a white space. I did end up on that other one having to come back with the jelly roll pen. So if you need to do that, that's fine. Because I started inking that in and then just inked in the whole thing. And you don't have to worry about making it an exact line on your highlight. It's just meant to be a little bit of a sparkle at the top of each of these. Just enjoy filling this in. OK. 
Okay. Almost got it. All right. And we're going to put another aura around the outside of this one. I'm pretty sure she had a second aura like this. Okay, two down. Okay, the next one that I want to show you is this one oh, by Shelley Beauchamp. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, and we're going to start with our half moon. And fill it in. Okay, and you can leave a little sparkle there if you want. I did not. And then just take your time to fill this in. Okay. And then our aura. And then let's go ahead and these are just simple petals. I hope I was on the screen. I wasn't paying attention. But all we did was this little thing. Okay, so for these petals, she comes up. Just a little dip and come back down. But she leaves a space between each petal Up. and back down. Come up, around, and back down. Okay, I'm going to go in that direction. Space between the petals. And same thing here. And you can see that I don't have them all the exact same height, and that's fine. And then inside of each of these, she does just a C curve, a dark one, and a light one. Okay, a little C curve. We're not filling that in. So one that's kind of dark and one that's kind of light. Yes, I missed one. <laughs> I started in the center. Okay, one more. All right. Uh, she also put these fine lines through here. I am very grateful for everyone who shares their Zentangle art. It's always very inspirational to me. Okay, and then the next thing is to add these lines here at the top of each petal. Just little flicks of your pen. Okay, just put your pen down and pull it towards you. Just tiny little lines. And 
one of these days I'll have to show you my camera setup. <laughs> I have to keep looking up to make sure everything's still in view. Okay. And then she came down this way, kind of connected there, and it kind of makes it look like these petals are going behind each other. Okay. This one goes down into the center. Okay, so there's that one. And then, let's, oh, you know what? I just realized I forgot something on that one, okay? And that's these little parts here. Just a little stem. <laughs> if my tile gets off the screen, remember, <clears throat> these are not perfect videos. But I'm having fun. I hope you are too. Okay, and then just these little lines at the bottom. Just little fine lines coming up from there. Okay. So now, <laughs> sorry about that. The last one is this one by Helen Williams. And we are going to start it out like we did here. <clears throat> so we're going to do our half moon with our aura. Then we're going to do our cross hatching. Okay, so we're just making lines that come across the other way. I'm not trying to make them perfect. All right. So now with these, it's going to come up, make a little bit of a point at the top, and come back down. And this is, I always start in the center. Come up. A little bit of a point and come back down. Come up, over, up, and down. I'm going to make this one fat. Just bring it all the way over. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Up and back down. Come up. Make our little point. Come all the way over and back down. Okay. They're not exact, but it's okay. Now we go down to the center. We're going to come up. Make a little loop and come back down. Do that on each one of these little petals. Okay. And then we're going to put our aura around it. Okay. 
And as long as I keep my pen facing the lines that I'm trying to aura, I do better. Just take your time. Turn your tile to make it easier. All right, there we go. We got them all on there. Um, next thing I'm going to show you is shading. There are a couple of different ways to shade this. Zoom back down. So this was notes that I was making, but you can do your shading right across these points if you want to, but I like how it looks this way, which is how I've got it on here. So we're gonna start in the center of the tile. Uh, excuse the wobbleness. And wherever these lines, the bottom of your little triangles, that's where we're gonna put our shading. And so I'm just looking for all of them that go in this direction. And I'm putting my pencil at the bottom of those little triangles. So on this side of the line. Okay, there's one. So I've done all the lines that are kind of going that way. I'm going to turn <clears throat> and do this side. Okay, we're putting it at the bottom of those triangles. And it gives the effect where it looks like these are woven and go under the other one. Okay, so now with my blending stop, my tortillon, I'm just gonna soften those lines Push them into the paper. And again, I'm staying on this side of that line. I know there are some of you who don't like adding graphite, but... Uh, I like the black and white tiles, and I enjoy doing just this simple shading. Okay, turn my tile and do these other sides. With 2024, I have decided to just try to focus on patterns and tiles that I enjoy working on, and then I'm a whole lot more likely to make a video that you will enjoy, okay? So now the shading on the henna drum, and I'm basically going to do the same thing on all of these. I'm going to put graphite on this outside of each of these auras. And for this one, I'm going to put it at the top of these. Oops, try not to put too much. I already know I put too much on that one. So with this kneaded eraser, all I have to do is just 
touch it and it lifts up a little bit of that, okay? And then soften it. Because I already have graphite on my blending stump, so I didn't need to put so much down. And that's a small area. I'll go ahead and soften this one. And just try to make it so you don't have a harsh line at that edge. Okay, let's go to this one. And then soften it. And I'm trying to make sure I don't put graphite inside of those little spots. You can also come back and add graphite in this outer border, that outside aura. Okay, a little bit of graphite at the bottom here. <clears throat> There you go. You could put a little bit of graphite inside these that have the cross hatching. And then soften that. All right, there we go. OTM and Henna Drum, four ways. <laughs> Again, OTM, Henna Drum. I encourage you to put the names on the back of your tile. You can sign it and date it and put your chop on the front. I look forward to seeing what you do with this. Whether you make a tile like this or you just use these ideas to come up with a different tile. I'm just teaching you patterns and you can put them together the way that you like because this is your art. All right, thank you again. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, leave comments, share. Uh, if you want to send a tile to me because you're not on social media, then there's my email address. I have several people who send me their tiles that way, and I love seeing them. So uh, there you go. Thank you, and I will see you next time. Have a great week. Bye.